Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining today's session. We have with us um, Wally Banks. Wally Banks is an institutional trader, a fund manager with many years of experience. If you have been joining our former webinars, you would have um, heard him speak. And, you know, he's here to like talk to us. So we have, we have a new series that we're starting, which is the monthly outlook. So Mr. Wally Banks is going to do us the honor of, um, he's going to pick some peers to talk about, and he's going to analyze the market for us down from the monthly time frame, weekly time frame. You know, this is going to guide how we place our trade, the asset we trade and for. So Mr. Wally Banks, can you kindly introduce yourself and, you know, let everybody get to know you. Hi everyone, good evening. Um. My name is um, Oz Banks, and um, I'm the founder of Oz Banks FX, and I'm a day trader and a string trader as well. Okay, thank you so much for introducing yourself. So, um, without wasting too much time, you know, let's get started with the business for today. So, like I said earlier on, Mr. Wally Banks is going to you know pick some pairs that is going to analyze. All of us are going to like you know be a part of the analysis is going to um talk to us about the future prediction what are the things we are supposed to look at and you know all those kind of thing and this um analysis we um guide our decisions in the market when trading you understand so um mr wally over to you all right thank you very much um mr thomas okay so now i'm going to be sharing my screen and um All right, thank you. So let me sh um, can I have permission to share my screen? Okay, one minute, please. Thank you. All right, yes, you can. Yeah. All right, so can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right, so let me go down to weekly outlook. So I created um a new list here for monthly outlook that I'm gonna be sharing. So I'm gonna start all analysis from the scratch. All right. So I'm gonna go down to DXY, starting from the monthly time frame. Okay, so um, I love the USD pairs a lot. And um, this is because I always, I understand their price action. And also I love the way they move, all right? And, you know, they have a lot of fundamental uh, events that move them. So on my list, as you can see right here, on I have GBP USD, I have Euro USD, AD USD, NZD USD. I have gold and I have USDCHF. So I'm going to be analyzing them and what I have and what my, my view and perspective is and what I've, um, the insight I have concerning this pair down from the monthly time frame down to the one hour and also look at um, other things necessary. So before we get started with the SSX USD, we're going to begin with DXY. So my screen right here, we have DXY, the one month time frame. Now there are two things that I look out for when I want to analyze. And that's something I want you also to pay attention to is that when you open your chart, the first thing you want to know is what trend am I in? Right? You want to understand the trend that you are in. Am I in the bullish trend or am I in a bearish trend? Am I in the seller's territory? Or am I in bias territory? All right. So you need to understand which one you are exactly. So this is DXY, the dollar index, and this is the current trend. All right. So you can see price is making a series of highs and um, higher lows. So we have higher highs and higher lows, and price has a new high and you know drop, and price looks like it's retracing back up, you know, probably whatever destination is added, and that's what I want to look out for today. 
So the first thing we want to do right now is to watch the current trend because we are now concerned with the current price action. All right, now, if you observe what happened here, is that the XO had been bullish since 2022, last year, and around January 2023, we started having um, this form of consolidation right here. As you can see that, right, price has been consolidating throughout this year. Last year, December, October, November, we had a bearish move that ended the year and price has been consolidating ever since. So the first thing we want to do right here is to watch out for the bullish move. So this will say the bullish move ended, I mean, based on the current trend right here. So we have a monthly breaker, right? We have this um, indecision candle, we have the last bullish candle, and we have the monthly breaker. So we're going to mark our monthly breaker right here. So here we have our monthly breaker. All right, so I'm going to name that quickly. And I'm going to name it MB for monthly breaker. Put it at the top. All right, so here we have it, monthly breaker. Then the next thing I'm going to do is to go for the last bullish candle that was broken, which will stand as my order block right here, monthly order block. So I've marked this as well. So monthly OB, so I'm going to put it as MOB. All right, good. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to look at this current market structure from this high down to the slope. So here I have the high and I have my low right here. Okay. And so I'm going to mark half of it, all right, which is 0 0.5. So take that out. Now, then I'll switch down to the weekly time frame. Now, this is what we have on the weekly based on all the levels we have drawn on the monthly time frame, all right? So from this weekly time frame, I mean, this is a new week, and we are heading down to the close of the week. But before I get down to current weekly uh, price action, what I want to do right now is to you know analyze what is likely going to be happening. Where are we headed to? A lot of people have actually been trying to sell the dollar um, index for you know for weeks now. Everyone has been trying to go sell you know probably because they feel like we have new lows, price is going to come back, you know retest all of that. But price, the dollar index has been strong so far. And you can see that price has been seeking all the old eyes right here. All right. Now, this is a previous old eye. Now, remember, we're in a weekly time frame. This is our old eye. This old eye has been taken. This old eye has been taken. All this represents buy stops on the weekly time frame. And now price is seeking this next old eye here. So you can see that price is clearly going after this old eye because all this represents buy stops or buy side liquidity. So price is targeting this eye to play it out. And now we have this eye taken, this eye taken, and now price is seeking this eye, okay? So I'm gonna mark this as my buy side liquidity on the week, monthly, on the weekly time frame now. All right, so I have that marked out. Then what we wanna do right now is to look at the current price. So this is the weekly candle. This is our last week now, this is last week's candle, yeah? So we're gonna mark our previous weekly low. So this is our previous weekly low right here. And now let me just name that. And then this is our previous weekly high. So let me mark that previous weekly low. I think I have a template, yeah. So this is my previous weekly low, PWL. And this is my previous weekly high, PWH. All right, so both of them have been marked out. Then you double down to the daily time frame. Now this is daily time frame. Now, look at what price is currently doing. And this is a daily time frame. Now, if you observe the daily chart right here, you can see that the, there has been no real pressure on the sell side. Everything has been by the bulls. Starting from this low, you can see that this low is intact. Now, let me zoom out so that it can be clearer. 
this low has been intact. This low right here has been intact. Price pulled to clear out this low here and reversed back up. Then we had rally, base rally. Price will trace back into that break here. This is a daily break. So here we have a daily breaker right here. And price retrace right into that daily break. Let's extend it a little bit. Yeah, and price rally back up. Now, of course, um, I personally have been looking for a bullish dollar throughout this week and um, took a wonderful trade today on sale for EU and GU. So now, and the reason because this is what the game plan has been for, for weeks, all right? I've been pretty much bullish and I still am bullish on the dollar index unless I see a reason to sell. So here, price you trace into the, um, the last daily break here, pick some orders and boom. Now let's go down to four hour time frame. Now these are four hour time frame. Remember this our daily breaker here, price retrace right into that zone, went back up, came down, and you can see that everything was held. None of these lows on four hour took out the previous low. Let me take that up again. Can you see that every low was intact? What this tells you that what price is building up is bias pressure, all right, the bulls are building up because every low was intact right here. Can you see that every low was intact? So I knew that, all right, this guy is definitely gonna go high and, you know, PPI came exactly as, as planned out. So now also, if you take your Fibonacci tool, and of course, from this, from uh, previous weekly low down to previous weekly high, that is my Fibonacci from my previous weekly low down to my previous weekly high, you can see that price went for 0 0.618. Can you see that sniper entry right here? Price was, went for 0 0.618 and price has targeted minus 27%, which is a potential for a new eye. So right now, um, okay, maybe after this class, I'm gonna exit my trades, all right? Because this is where I take profit, minus 0 0.27 and price has gotten to that new eye, all right? So now that we already have that, now let me quickly explain how you're gonna use your FIB for your weekly analysis or how I use my FIB. Now this is my Fibonacci right here, all right? And this is my bullish Fibonacci right here. How do you take it? From one to zero, this is when we have an expansion, when price gives an expansion. You wait for a treatment into between 618 to 0.786. All right, either 786 in between or 0.786. Now, sorry, 0, 0 0.618 in between or 0.786. So I prefer 0 0.786 most of the time. But when price is giving me 618 on higher time frame from daily down to weekly, that's when I use 0 0.618. So you take that, all right? But most times, look out for 786. And your target is minus 27% level. So which means that every time you enter a sell around this any of this level, take profit here because it's always the potential for a new low. And here you will get your break of structure or um, sell stops. And also the same thing you use for the buy from one to zero, from zero to minus uh, 0 .7, from to 0 0.76 down to minus 27%. Same thing. Now you only target minus 0.618. Is supposed to be 0 0.618, not 616. Let me correct that. Six one eight. All right, so you are to only target minus 0 0.618 when price is overbuying. Maybe the market, there's an overbought in the market. That is what you target. Do you understand? All right, so that's how you use your fee, okay? So going back to our price, this is the reason why I entered at 0 0.618, as you can see. So what we have here is simple, what we call impulse correction impulse, simple as ABC, you understand? So what you wanna do is to pay attention to price delivery. And like I explained down from the monthly, weekly, daily, price delivery has been bullish on the XY. So what you wanna pay attention to is the delivery in price and where price is actually added and you follow that direction, all right? So now with DXY, what do we have right now with DXY? So now let me take out this fib 
and let's look at what's going to be the future. I mean, between Thursday, tomorrow is Friday, and then we have next week as well. Now, like I said earlier, I said that we have a buy side liquidity that price is clearly seeking after, which is this old high right here. Can you see that? So we have this eye was cleared out, this eye was cleared out, and now we have this particular buy side to clear, all right? So on, of course, which um, on the next analysis, I'm gonna share what is gonna be happening for next week, all right? So for now, this is Thursday, and you know we've already gone ahead, but I'm gonna share on the next analysis. But right now, just have in mind that price is seeking this eye and it's gonna clear it out. Now, what that means for, um, USD pairs. Now, if you want to trade USD pairs, you can't ignore dollar. You have to understand how the dollar moves because everything with the USD pairs is that they are traded against the dollar. You understand? Excuse me, please, one minute. All right, so is that everything is traded against the dollar, all right? So you have to understand how the dollar moves for you to effectively trade pairs like GU, EU, AU, NU, and other pairs that have to do with the XY. So now that we've seen what the dollar is actually added for, now we're going to go down to Euro USD. Now, I like the Euro USD um, more. It's my favorite pair, and this is because it's inversely correlated with the dollar. Do you understand? It's inversely correlated with the dollar. It's like opposite in direction. Okay. So here we have the Euro USD, and you can see that this guy has been bearish. I mean, for a while here, it's been going down. So let's use the same model we use for the XY. Now, watch this. This is our monthly breakup right here. So price broke this month's high right here. Can you see that? Price took out that monthly breakup. So let me change that to black. Now let's go down to the weekly time frame. This is our weekly time frame. Now let's mark our previous weekly high and our previous weekly low. This is our previous weekly high. Every time you want to analyze and you really want to be profitable, make sure you understand your previous weekly high and previous weekly low very important so here are my previous weekly high and this is my previous weekly low now this is the current weekly candle current one okay i remember this is a monthly breakout now you're going to see what happens during the day now you now go down to daily time frame and let's reset our chart now can you see what price did this week so now all right look how price it is week. what price did here was that when we have a break down, bearish, uh, a clear bearish delivery, what will price take? This was the last previous weekly low. This was the last previous weekly high. This is the monthly breakout. What price did it will price traded into the monthly breakout? Can you see that? This was where the market broke out from clearly. And also we have the other block right here. And we also have a base. We have a drop, we have a base, we have a drop. And price traded right into that base which is also the previous, uh, the, the weekly breakout. And watch what happened, they dumped it. Now, what happened here is this. If you look at the daily time frame, you find that we have buy side liquidity right here. We all have buy side liquidity here, buy side liquidity here. And what we have right here is that orders here were not filled. What the bearish um, candle did here it shows that we're go back to feel that um that order so that they can get more so yesterday's ppi uh we were expecting that to happen but eu didn't really drop or other usd pairs didn't really move and i sent out a message i said the last time this happened was july and this was what happened in july because i always pay attention to price history and what has happened this was july this was a move in july this is what cpi did CPI 
traded high. This is it. This move here. This is July. CPI traded high. And it didn't really go up like that. Then the next day, PPI dumped the price. So when I saw the same thing happen today, I said, oh, they're going to repeat what happened in July. And that was exactly what happened here. Now, if you take your Fibonacci, where's my feed now? From this high down to the previous weekly low. From the previous weekly high down to the previous weekly low. What do we have here? 0 0.618. The same thing that happened on DXY happened with Edo USD. And what do we have here? The moment they feel the order, they don't price. So here we have another bearish delivery. Okay. Now let me take out my Fibonacci now. And let's look at what next. Now let's assume, now based on assumption now, okay, that this is our current previous weekly low. Let's assume that today's Friday and price has ended. All right. So let's mark here as our previous weekly. Um, let's go back to the weekly time frame. So now when this week closes, and let's assume this is today's weekly close, this becomes our previous weekly low, and this becomes our previous weekly high in terms of this current candle now. Now, what do you think would be the price delivery? Remember, this was the last, supposed to be previous weekly low. This was our last previous weekly low. What's gonna happen is that we're gonna expect price to be traced into that previous weekly low, and then we'll continue downward again. Price always repeats this thing. Always does that. All right? Price always does that. So that's what we're going to be looking at for on the Euro USD. Now, I'm going to jump to daily. Can you see the price delivery? Price dumped right here. Now, let's go down to four hour time frame. All right. Now, look at the four hour time frame. See what happened? We have drop. Base rally, um, drop, base drop, drop, base drop, impulse, correction, impulse, 618, monthly breakout. Everything aligned with the XY. This shows you the perfection that we can enjoy, all right? The perfection that we can enjoy by understanding how price action really works. Now, with all these kind of things, you don't need um, indicators, you don't need all of that, even though there are places where those things are being used, but you need to understand how price action really, really works. So, understanding this delivery, all you need to do is to be patient. Now, the days where I recommend you actually take your trades should be Wednesdays and Thursdays. These are the days where you get to move the price, move the best. Wednesdays and Thursdays. No hurry, nothing. I haven't traded this week until yesterday and today. And I only traded yesterday because I thought CPI was going to give me that drop that I was looking for, but CPI never did. But, you know, today PPI did. All right, so now price has dropped. And what has price left behind? Watch this. Price has filled this void here. Can you see that it's been filled? Now, what has price left behind here? Now you can see that we have a big fair value gap here on this for our time frame. Can you see that here? Big gap. So which means that when price is gonna be going back up, we're gonna have this fair value gap filled, whichever becomes our previous weekly low anyway. Price is come back to fill the order and continue downward. Simple as that. Do you understand? So this is what we're gonna be looking at for. But like I said, I'm just projecting forward. But for now, what we're going to see that we're going to wait for our weekly close before we can start looking at what is going to be for the next. The same thing with GPUSD. GPUSD has the same thing, all right? So we use the same model in trading GPUSD. However, there's a pair that didn't really move, and that's AUD USD. And that caught my attention, and this is AU. Now, if you observe, AU didn't move the same way EU and GU moved. GU dumped. Euro USD dumped. But the AUD... USD did not dump. Can you see that price rallied? Price came back for this other block here, and boom, price jumped in. Now, the reason why price respected this zone, because I didn't take AU, and the reason why I didn't take AU is because AU came for something very key here. Now, every time you have price consolidating, when you have a market structure like this, what you want to do is to mark it out, the high and the low. All right, you mark your, your half, 0 0.5. Can you see that? That becomes your equilibrium. All right, that becomes your equilibrium. Now, watch what happened. After EU broke out, came for that equilibrium. Can you see that? Snap out entry and went back up. So this was the reason why I didn't sell this guy at all. Because I feel like this guy peaked order from a very key zone. 
So there was no need selling it. Even though I was interested in selling AUD for the week, but I no longer sold it because price came for the equilibrium, which is 0.5% of that cons uh, consolidating zone right here and rally up. And also it was corrected. So I knew definitely that we already have an order here, bullish move, bullish breakup. Price came back here, definitely going back up. But now, however, I am currently in a sell on this pair. And that's because I took the sell from somewhere around here and I'm still holding. And this was going down to daily. Now let's analyze this guy from the daily. Since let's see if you can catch any trade with this guy. Let's start from the weekly now. So this is AD USD. This is AD USD right here. And this is our previous weekly high. Bang. And this is our previous weekly low bank. All right. Now we're going to go down to our previous daily high and our previous daily low. So this is our previous daily candle. So let's mark here as our previous daily high, PDH, and our previous daily low, PDL. All right, now let's go down to one hour time frame. Now, can you see what happened? Price has taken the previous daily high. Liquidity has been taken. So this is an old eye. This is an old eye cleared out. This is an old eye cleared out. Can you see that? All cleared, bang, bang. Price came right into this little uh, other block right here. And we also have... Let me see if we have a fair value gap there. Do we have a fair value gap? Let's check 15 minutes. All right, so these are 15 minutes. So we don't have a fair value gap. However, we have an order block right here. So let's mark that. Let's mark our order block and let me extend it back and let's see if it matches where price peaked. Extend. Extend, yep, can you see that? Go back to one R, yep. So, can you see, price came for here, drop, and price went up again for its second time. So we have an other block here, and this was what price was expected with this for. However, we also have another block here that price came from, also the equilibrium of this consolidated zone, and price started up. So now on AUD USD, what I wanna see, is we have buy side and sell side liquidity here. We have sell side liquidity everywhere, all right? And we can also draw our trend line liquidity, which I want to see AUD-USD take out. I mean, when AU breaks out of this, yeah? We just wait for a little pullback or retracement into this zone. Now, we're not expecting anything above in here. Nope. The moment it breaks, we just want here. We just want here. And then we start targeting the previous weekly low. And now you want to see what you want to see is that every liquidity below, can you see here we have under trend and liquidity rate. Can you see that? Everything here, we want to see it cleared out. Every single thing, we want to see everything cleared out here. So that becomes what we want to look at for AUS. And this is what I'm seeking. All right. So because AU did not move, um, I had to wait to check it again. And when I find out, okay, this thing looking bad, not good, like, let's see what we can do. So I took this out. So now it's looking good, but um, I didn't risk much as I want this place to be taken out. Once price takes out this low, I'll wait for a little pullback into this zone here, into this zone, somewhere around here. Can you see that? Boom. So we just need something like this. Once it respect this zone, just look for sale and target price taking out this low here because it becomes your buy side um, sell side liquidity. So you're gonna see price take it out. All right, so simple as that. So this is what I will be looking at for on AUD/USD. So, but for the other peers, the truth is price has gone for the week. So I'm not looking too much at the market because we are done with EU and A and GU. But for AUD/USD, we're gonna be looking out to see price actually give us something. Since the previous daily low I has been taken, now we need the previous daily low to be cleared out below. All right, and also. 
if you look at the four hour, I mean, for those of you that trade trend lines, what you can do is connect these eyes. One, two, three. So let's try that out. Can you see that? So we have one, and let me tip that up. So we have one, we have two, and we have three. Can you see that? So, and then you can also do something like this. This is a corrective move. This is another corrective move. So you can see that what happened here, we have impulse, correction, impulse. And now price as in impulse, correction, expect another impulse. So here we have another corrective move. We have another corrective move. So trust me, guys, when I tell you that expect a massive breakout below. Price is definitely going to take out this previous weekly low because we have liquidity resting right below it. We have liquidity resting right, right below it. So I want to see price clear everything below on this AUD US thing. All right. Now, if we take our Fibonacci from this high, where's our previous weekly high now? Okay, this is our previous weekly high. This is our previous weekly low. So let's do that. Previous weekly high, previous weekly low. What do we have here? We have 0 0.786. Can you see that? But if we use this other high here, we might get 0 0.618. This is our other high. So what do we have? 0 0.618. Can you see that? And this was where EU and G sold from. And that was where DXY also picked from. So we're going to be expecting some bearish move. And what did I say? Let your target be where? Let your target be minus 27% level. Okay. And the potential for a new low. Simple as ABC. Do the same thing for NZD USD. NZD USD, same thing. Now let's start from the weekly time frame too. All you have to do is repeat. Now, can you see what's happening? Price is targeting to fill everything that price left behind here. All right. So we have break of structure, shifting, um, shifting market structure, break, break. And now we have another new move. Now let's mark out the previous weekly high quickly and do the same thing for NZD USD. So we have our previous weekly high. Now let's highlight that. Where's my template? Okay. And we have our previous weekly low. Bang. Now go down to daily time frame. This is our daily. Previous daily high. Previous daily high, PDH. And our previous daily low, PDL. Now, your previous daily low, when your market is bearish, represents sell side liquidity. Every time you're in a bearish trend and you have a previous weekly low, price will seek to take it out. Please never forget this. So this is what we are looking at for right now. So we have a previous weekly uh, daily low, PDL. Good. Now let's go down to one hour time frame. And this is our one hour time frame. Now, guess what price is doing? Price, let me just use for R so that we can have a clarity here. Now, permit me for not using full screen, like taking out this, um, the pairs. I just like to use my analysis slightly because it gives me focus. When I expand screen, I get to get distracted. So this just shows me what I want to see. No distraction, nothing. All right. So here we have impulse. Can you see? We have an impulse move. Price is correcting. Trust me, guy. By the time this guy is going to sell, every liquidity resting here will be cleared out. So we have a corrective wave here. Can you see that? Correction. Bang. So we have impulse, correction, impulse. And also, you can also mark that as A, B, C, D, E. Period. What happens after E has been met? Price breaks out. Boom. Downwards. Simple as that. Can you see that? So all, if you observe, now let me share something with you that is very key here. And the reason why you shouldn't miss this out. Now look at this. Look at the buy side. This is um, old eye. This old eye cleared out. Let's mark that old eye now. This is an old eye. Can you see? Cleared out buy side liquidity. They cleared out seller stop loss. Then they done. They took out sellers again. They done. They took out sellers again. So some have been, have been trying to sell this thing and they've been cleared out, cleared out, cleared out. What is the price doing? Whenever price is about to drop and to drop so hard, the first thing price seeks after are sellers. 
even though the intention is to sell, price seek after sellers to clear out their stop loss. Finally, after price has filled the desired order, price dumps. And this is what's going to be happening with AUDUSD and NZUSD. AU, GU, they already played out because they are weak. And the reason why NU and AU did not move, all right, including, uh, uh, yeah, the reason why they didn't move is because of the current oil prices, all right, now fundamental speaking. But price action, these guys are going to melt and they are going to melt really, 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 really hard. All right. So, but I didn't take any, and now the reason why I don't like, I didn't trade NU because NZD US is, uh, I don't like the spread. So I always avoid NZDPS and CHFPS because of the spread. So I didn't take NZD, but trust me, it's a good setup for a sell. So we already have impulse, correction, impulse. Now, if you take your Fibonacci from this high down to the previous weekly low, you can see that price has not gone into 0 0.618. Can you see that? But if you switch on 0 0.5, which represents your equilibrium, and this is my 0 0.5, price has peaked 0 0.5. Can you see that? Price has peaked 0 0.5 and it's already bearish. However, if we use the previous weekly high, this is the previous weekly high, what the price peaks 0 0.618 and 0 0.786. And remember, I told you that how to use your feed is go for 0 0.786 or go for 0 0.618. Any of them, both of them are always correct, all right? But for those of you that like to play safe, go for 786. If you know that you love to make your money, you don't like to waste time, go for 0 0.618, but both of them always work. So price has gone for 0 0.786, and it's all, this is also our within corrective wave. So which means that after the wave is complete, we get a huge dump to the downside. And where's your target? Minus 27% level. So it's a potential for a new low. So price is definitely going to get here. Bang. Definitely without a doubt. All right. Price is going to get here. Unless maybe there's a you know shift in structure, price like to go up and a bullish move start. But as long as price and market is still bearish, we are going down. So this is what um, I have, and this is what you should also look at from on NCD USD. Now I'm going to go down to gold. Now, fortunately, gold has actually been dumping, like gold has really, really been bearish, all right? And I have a gold sell from here. I'm still holding that sell. I have a gold sell from here. I'm still holding that sell. And the reason why I sold is what I've explained, because price grab liquidity right here. Can you see that? Old eye. Old eye, price took the sellers. So like I said, every time price wants to sell, the first thing they seek after are early sellers. Monday sellers, Tuesday sellers. Then Wednesday is consolidated and then Thursday they may move. That's what price does. So when we are expecting a bearish week, I spend Monday and Tuesday to trade higher. Even though if they plan to sell, they take you out and then they move. And that's why people start shouting, oh, manipulation, my surplus. No, so yes, it's not every time manipulation happens. Sometimes you just didn't pay attention to what exactly is happening. So here, as you can see, we have a shift in market structure right here. Market structure shift. We have liquidity have been taken. Bank. We have a field high. This is our field high. Price gave us a field high. Field high means that price didn't take out the previous high. So let's mark this our high, all right, which is also liquidity. And here, so I have a sell here, and what I'm looking out for now. Now let's go down to weekly time frame, and let's do that for gold as well. So this is gold. Yeah, can see gold. Now the reason why I particularly would say that I wasn't day trading gold is because I still feel like gold is in a continued bullish move. And the reason why I feel like gold is in a continued bullish move is because gold has a different price action from the rest. If you observe, gold has really been, you know, trading whatever it feels like. Gold has not really been following what a lot of people feel like, except to a skill pack. If a swinger like myself, you can be honest that gold has not really been moving the way it ought to move, okay? Or we assumed it was going to move. So now I have a concern with gold, and that's because I feel like gold is still going back up. And the reason is because if you look at the 4R, price is correcting down to the downside. And I feel like when price comes back around this zone here, we might start getting some bullish orders, you know, to go up or whichever the case may be. And if you look at the daily time frame, the same thing also, all right? Unless gold takes out this low, and then we are going to work down. Because if you observe, 
price came to fill an order here and the sell continued. Now let's look at the weekly chart. This is gold. Now I'm gonna clear everything so we can have a brand new analysis. So this is gold, weekly time frame. This is our previous weekly high. And this is our previous weekly low. So let me highlight that. Previous weekly high and our previous weekly low. Yep. So you go down to daily time frame. That is your daily. See that? Previous weekly low, previous weekly high. Now this is our daily. This is our previous daily high. This is our current daily low. This is our current daily candle. So this is our previous weekly low. PDL. And this is our previous daily high, which is also around our previous weekly high. Now you go down to four hour time frame. Now this is for our time frame. Look at what God did. What God did was go traded into that high, that previous weekly high. Can you see that? Price broke. Can you see that now? We had a price delivery here that cleared out this sell side liquidity. So after buyers, uh, sorry, sellers were cleared out here, early sellers now, they took out their stop loss, even though they were correct to have been selling. They took out their stop loss, then they dumped. Price traded into the break. Now, this is the break. And so now we have our weekly break out here. So, for some of you that trade support, resistance, supply, demand, this works too. So, this is our previous support, now resistance. Can you see that? Price, but I don't trade that anymore because um, the algorithm for trading forex has changed. So, here we have price took out the sell side liquidity, bang, broke out, right? Price fell right into it, few others, and don't. Can you see that? And that's what caused the gold to actually go down. Now, with the news today, I mean, everyone would expect that gold will actually melt, but gold did not really move, unlike EU and GU that were really strong, that were really weak, because the XY, this is a candle, the XY pumped I so, so hard. But what happened to gold? Gold didn't really move like that. So whenever you see something like this, this will tell you that there's something that is happening behind and that's fundamental analysis. So you want to make sure that you do not trace something that will affect your technical analysis, even though you can be right or correct. But because fundamentally, something is holding price, so they're not expecting what's happening. So that's why I like to always check what news do we have for the news? And what news do we have for the week? And which of the um, peers are actually Rest, um, are actually aligning with the news technically. Now I'm talking about price action now, which of them? So whenever I see impulse correction impulse or prices consolidating, I know for a fact that, okay, this guy is aligning with news. We're going to get it done. All right. So AU, gold, NU, they didn't really move. But right now, I'm good with AU and I'm looking for a sell. It would have sold. I, know I sold from here. But I just need this break so that I can load it. All right. So this is just a sell because of the previous weekly eye here. All right. So when price enter the previous weekly eye, I take a sell. But I want to see price break out of this zone. Then we we'll start looking for a bearish delivery. Now the last one is USCHF. Now this is USCHF uh, weekly time frame. All right, so I'm going to clear this out. I think it's an old analysis. I'm going to clear this out right here. Now let's mark our previous. Now I want to say something. USCHF trades in the same direction as DXY. They don't have the same price action. You get understand? They don't have the same price action. But when dollar is weak or strong, this guy is also weak or strong. All right, so take note. So here we have USDCHF. Now I don't trade this one too because, like I said, it has chips. Chip pairs are usually they usually have ice spray. But I like this guy in lot because it moves with dollars. So I trade it once in a while. So here we have our previous weekly low, and here we have our previous weekly high. Now let's go down to the daily time frame. These are daily now. Previous daily high right here. And previous daily low right here. Bang for R. All right. 
Now watch this. Previous weekly low. Previous daily low. Previous weekly high. What did price do? So what did price do to previous weekly high? Liquidity. Price cleared it out. Then see. Price took it out. Now this pair has been a lot of like, how do I put it now? This pair has been haunting. A lot of people have been trying to sell this guy and it's been haunting him out. And the reason why I wouldn't suggest, if you want to sell this guy, just scalp it. Because I saw this guy, I think yesterday or two days ago, but it was scale. Just scalp him, not, you know, because the trend is bullish. And if you observe, every single low has been holding. Can you see? Look at this low here. Every low held. Low. Everything has been holding. Can you see that? Low held, low held. So there's no signal for you to actually sell yet. You understand? So this guy remains bullish. And since the XY is seeking after the old eyes to clear out the liquidity today, I also feel like this guy is likely going to do the same thing as we have an old high here. And price is likely going to seek it. However, we have an other block here. So we have to pay attention to that. All right. So now what I want to see with this guy is there's an other block here. So I'm going to measure that other block. And also measure the consolidating area too. So these are other block. So let's measure the other block. This is our last bullish candle before the break. So let's mark our 0 0.5 of the other block. This is our equilibrium, 0 0.5. So let me mark it as black. All right, so now let's mark the entire correction and let's mark our equilibrium too. So from this low down to this high, this has 0 0.5. So let's mark it as well. All right, so now let's take out our feet. Now I'm gonna reset the chart and let's go back to see if price has entered into any of them. This is what price is doing. Price has broken, can you see? Price is around the first equilibrium. That is the half of the entire equilibrium. But the other block half is right above. Can you see that? So, which means that we are likely going to see maybe like a reversal, a sell off, or something, whichever the case may be, for this particular pair here. You understand? So, but however, we want to watch out for sell confirmation before we start selling, which means that only sell if the sell, if the trend is bearish and only buy if the trend is bullish. Don't counter. If you counter, you become the liquidity. Trade in line with the pair. You understand? So with this pair, I won't give you any update for now or what to do. I'll just tell you later on, but I want to see the weekly close. Tomorrow is Friday. I want to see how the weekly is going to close. All right. But for the others, EU, GU, AU, NU, I'm giving you guys the direction and where they are headed. All right, so EU, GU, if already played out, there's nothing you can do anymore. All right, so just wait for weekly um, close. But for AUD, USD, I still feel like you can catch something. So keep your eyes on AUD, USD. Wait out, wait out for a breakout here, pull back, and then you sell. The same thing for NZD, USD as well. Can you see that? Ends of the USD as well. You see that you wait for a breakout or you check out 15 minutes time frame. This is 15 minutes time frame. As you can see, price has taken what? Buy side liquidity, field high, shifting structure. Now, this is internal structure now. So this is the last, this is a low responsible for this high, this high. So price broke, field high, broke, went up, broke. So everything has been shifted. So you can start looking for a sell, probably, you know, scalping or something. But I would recommend that the best sell confirmation is going to be price going out of the range, this corrective zone here. Can you see that price breaking out? Then a little pullback. Now, the reason why I would say a little pullback is because if price should break out, they're not going to give you a proper retracement anymore because this is a retracement already. So you watch out for this weekly low. Can you see this low here? This is previous daily low here. Mark it out like this. So if price breaks, bank, allow it to just tap into that zone, then we will sell so, so hard. Simple as that. So we already have, we already have 
the price delivery from approve is bearish. Correction, and then we go down. So only AEU and NU right now have something we can trip. The rest are already laid out. So this is what I have for the pairs that I'm looking at for. So maybe I'll take some questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Wally Banks. Um, someone was asking a question in the channel, and um, the person said, "Do you analyze indices? If you can, you know, if it's part of your favorite pairs to analyze." Oh, indices? No, I I don't trade on Derry. Uh, no indices like um, I think the person is talking US about 30, US thirty, all those ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, which one does the person want me to analyze? Because there are many indices. Okay. Um, I see someone here say um, US 30. Okay. Um, someone say what's the best time to analyze swing trade? Uh, the best time frame to analyze swing should be weekly and daily and four hour. Weekly, daily, four hour. They use 15 minutes for entry. That's for sniper entry. All right, someone is actually emphasize on stop loss. Um, your stop loss should be above the flip. Okay, how do I put this now? Stop loss depends on. Okay, let me start with US 30. Let me start with US 30. Then I'll answer the others. Uh, let me use paper stone. All right, so this is US 30. Let's start from the weekly time frame. Okay. So this is our previous weekly high. This is our previous weekly low. Daily time frame now. These are daily. Now, this is our previous weekly high and low. So let me highlight that so I can PWI and PWL. Okay. Now, this is our previous daily high. These are previous daily low. All right. Now, for, for context, I want to say this for context. All right. I, I only use previous daily high on Sundays when I'm analyzing the new setup for the week. I only mark the previous daily high. I don't do that once Monday starts, once, once a new week starts, no. Once, once I mark my previous daily high on Sunday after the week has closed, I don't pay attention to it anymore. I just look at the weekly high and the weekly low. Please take notes. I'm only using previous daily high because to help you understand analysis. You understand? So next time I'm analyzing, which I'll call be Sunday, I'm going to do that so you see how it can be used. So now this is series 30. Now let's go down to 4R. So on 4R time frame, you can see that what price it hit is that we have our previous weekly low and this is our previous weekly high. So price is seeking the previous weekly high to take out liquidity. Now, looking at this market structure, You can see that this retracement here, right? Price came to feel something here. All right, price came to feel the gap here and push back up. Now, let's look at what happened around this zone here because this looks bullish actually. So you take your feet from this low down to the high. You have those zero points. 7 and 0.618 in between. Price came here. So I will actually call this 0.618 actually because price didn't get to 786. So I'm price already up. So what I'm looking at is price may get to minus 27% level here. All right. So now let's see what lies around here that price is seeking after. So let's mark that soon here. Let's delete the feed. And let's delete this as well. Let's look out for R now. Okay, so what's, what we have here is on the four hour, we have a fair value gap, which I think that price may come to feel the fair value gap here. We have a fair value gap here. So this is a fair value gap. 
this is the first candle, second touch. So this is the gap. So as you can see, price did not fill the gap when price broke. So here we have a break. Can you see that? Price broke out. Pull back, didn't fill the gap, drop. Pull back, nothing, drop. Price, hold I, hold I, hold I. Hold I cleared. These two has been cleared out. Liquidity taken. So this may be the next eye that price is seeking after this one. Price may see this eye too. So this uh, previous weekly high has been taken. Can you see it? It's been taken a little just now. So what you want to see is there's a four hour fair value gap. So you want to do is to see price trade right into that zone to fill it. Can you see that? Then probably wait for um, price to drop, go up again. Look for a shift in structure for 15 minutes. Wait for price to retrace, look for a fair value gap or other block, and then you can sell so that price can take out this liquidity because we clearly have liquidity here. Can you see that? Sell side, sell side, sell side. It will seek them. So when price fills the fair value gap here, wait for uh, a confirmation, like 15 minutes sell off or one hour confirmation, then find 15 minutes or five minutes entry and target these loads for price to take them out. So that's for US 30. Um, NASDAQ, do you use RSI? No, no, I don't use RSI, guys. I don't use RSI. Okay, RSI divergence. Yes, I do. I do. I do. NASDAQ, okay. USD JPY. Oh boy, so many questions here. All right, uh, Mr. Tom, do we still have time? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. I said, do we still have time? Because there's so many Yes, questions. I think we can spare another 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yes. Okay, all right, let me quickly answer some okay. here. All right, um, I'm, I've done that for US 30. Um, someone said, what's the correlation between US 30 and US dollar? Actually, I don't know because I do not trade US 30. So I can't really answer that now. I trade majorly US EPS and JPY, just major both of them, that's what I trade. Yes, I have a, a YouTube channel, just search for with banks FX. So I'm not, yeah, there are not much content there, but we, have, we do upload analysis there once in a while. But we're going to be very active. NASDAQ, okay, I'm going to analyze NASDAQ, NASDAQ now. So we're going NASDAQ. to make all these video analysis available on the YouTube channel so everybody can have access to them. Okay, that's true. That's true. All right, uh, let me take note of that. Uh, USDJPY. Let me take note of this. USDJPY, um, NASDAQ. Okay. Okay, so guys, uh, because of time, I will take note of all the pairs you guys want me to analyze and um, I will make that available. GPP, JPY, okay. So we have GJ, uh, one minute please. Just give me one minute. All right, so let's start USD, JPY, GBP, JPY, NAS 100 as NASDAQ. Okay, is that all? Someone said, does that mean you don't trade on Monday and Tuesday even if you see your setup playing out? Yes, I don't, I don't. Uh, I I'm, I'm going to explain that, but okay, now the reason I don't trade on Monday and Tuesday is because of less volume. Now, the thing is this, it's not about my setup. You understand? It's what price action gives to me. Okay, so, but sometimes if I see my setup on Monday, Tuesday, I take them if I see my setup or price gets to my POI. 
I take them. But from experience, in most cases, they end up hitting stop loss. So I don't do that anymore. So what happens, for example, now the past two weeks, apart from this week, two weeks ago, price missed my POI and I didn't get to trade at all. You get, so sometimes I don't do that. So I was waiting for price to get my POI on Wednesday. Price did on Tuesday. I didn't take the trade at all. Then later on Thursday, price gave me an entry and I jumped in. So I don't trade Monday and Tuesday at all. Um, okay, I'm going to do GPUSD later. All right, stop loss. Stop loss. Okay, what? how to put stop loss is before you take a trade, you, you see, the thing is, liquidity is that when you have buy stops and sell stops, that shows you, whenever you see liquidity, it shows you that they've cleared out sell, um, uh, buyers and sellers. They've cleared out stop loss. You understand? So you want to make sure that liquidity has been taken before you start looking for entry. Don't enter a trade or a setup where liquidity has clearly not been taken. No, they will take your stop loss wherever you put it. So about stop loss, once liquidity has been taken, wait for a shift in market structure and find your entry. That way, they put your stop loss above the liquidity, which your stop loss should be between 10 to 20 pips max, 20 pips max. Don't go above that. And make sure your setup is between one ratio three. Don't do one ratio one. You won't be profitable. Don't do one ratio two. Max, you will, do, you will be breaking even. Do one ratio three and target three setups in a week. Okay, no, no. It depends. Let's say six setups, six setups in a week. And look for pairs that you know you understand very well. And if you trade one pair, trade that pair three times a week. If you trade more than two, three pairs, you can take them six times a week. So what I do is that I only trade three times a week. And that's GU, EU, AU, or gold. That's all. But most times I trade just EU and GU. How do you know your previous and current daily highs and low? How you know is by looking at the candle. So this is how you know your previous daily highs and low. Just go to your daily, uh, your daily time from here. I can see that. When you click on daily, every candlestick represents daily. Can you see that? Every candlestick represents daily. If you go to weekly, every candlestick represents daily, uh, weekly. So now this is my, this is the current one. Can you see the price counting? This is the current one. So the next candle before the current one is your previous candle. So you mark the high and the low. That's how you get your previous daily high and your previous daily low. Someone said, do you consider yourself an XMC or ICT trader? I don't consider myself none. I just trade price action, all right? I consider myself a price action trader and institutional trader, and that's because I swing a lot. So I keep my eyes on um, um, key zones so I can all trade. If you have a nine to five job, can you run the lives? Okay. Uh, yes, you can. Yes, you can, absolutely. All right, guys, so I'm going to drop all these things on my YouTube because of time, okay? And also, I'll be sending some analysis to consumer traders every Sunday so you guys can see them, okay? So every Sunday, I will send analysis for the week to consumer traders and um, and I also provide some of my YouTube channel as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Wally Banks. Um, tonight has been a well-spent one, uh, you know, analyzing different pairs that you've done tonight. And I'm pretty sure everybody has gained one or two things from you know the analysis tonight at consumer traders our um, major focus is to empower our traders because one of the things we notice is that most traders don't know how to analyze the market most traders know how to analyze the market and then we are investing so much in you know the educational part to allow everybody you know participate in the forex market profitably so yeah thank you so much the video will be out tomorrow morning on our youtube channel and our instagram channel and every sunday like i said we are going to be having weekly outlook and then at the end of the month you know we get to like analyze the everything that we you know an analyze during the month get to review it and then our forecast for the new month as it comes so thank you all for joining um see everybody again at the end of the month and then on 
Sunday, another video is going to be coming out, weekly outlook, so that everybody can have an idea of what the week is going to be like. Thanks so much, Mr. Wally Banks, for coming. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Till we meet again next week.